All right, guys, my name is Dr. Stefan. I'm gonna wait a minute here uh, to get a few people on the line, but really uh, this, this video is more than just about just being live right now. So there are going to, this is gonna be up on our page. We're gonna push this out to you guys so you know, um, you know, so you get a chance to really take this in, okay? Uh, but that being said, um, I guess we can go ahead and get started. Uh, my name is uh, Dr. Eric Steffen. Um, I'm going to talk today um, about the five steps uh, that we use for people to help kill your cravings. Uh, cravings are a big issue uh, for anyone that's trying to lose weight, whether it's on your own, on some sort of structured program, on our program. I'm always trying to communicate these steps uh, with people, okay? Um, so I'm with Twin Hills Health Center, Twin Hills Weight Loss. We're here in uh, Muncie, PA, which is near Williamsport, if you're not familiar. Um, and this information I'm going to go over today, it's, it's for people that are currently on our program. It is for people that are thinking about possibly joining our program. It's for people who have done our program in the past and, you know, maybe you need a reboot. Um, this is what we've been working on lately. Every, every month, every year, we're always trying to improve uh, the service that we provide here. And this is an update for, for even people that have done our program in the past. Um, so make sure you share this video with your friends or with anybody that you, who you may think uh, this could benefit. Um, it's going to benefit them. You know, a couple of tidbits of knowledge here. Um, at the end, um, if anybody has any questions, you can just put that in, in the comment box there and I will either answer them uh, live today or I will go through them you know, later on this afternoon and get that, um, you know, get those, all those questions answered, okay? So let's talk about the first step, okay? The first step is uh, hormones. So we have to balance your body's natural hormones anytime you're trying to help cut your cravings. So when most people think about hormones, they think about the common with testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, the male and female sex hormones, when in actuality, there are many, many hormones that your body secretes and produces to control a lot of your body's uh, normal processes. Uh, vitamin D. Vitamin D is a hormone that helps control your blood calcium levels, regulates your bone strength, uh, very important. Serotonin, dopamine, those are your feel-good hormones that can help control your mood. Um, cortisol. Cortisol is a really important one that's uh, released in response to physical or emotional stress, okay? Uh, insulin. Insulin is one we're going to talk about quite a bit. Cortisol and insulin, we're going to talk about those quite a bit here in, in, in a few minutes. Uh, melatonin, that's another one. That's your sleep hormone, helps regulate your body's sleep patterns. Um, and so these hormones can become uh, decreased or not produced in the most optimum levels. And a lot of people make the mistake of giving themselves pills or injections or something like that to correct these errors. And, you know, to put it simply, that can sometimes just alter your body's natural ecosystem and really isn't something we want to be doing all the time. Um, you know, just specific, specifically about our program, um, you know, our program is designed to help correct these buttons, these, these uh, natural imbalances uh, naturally, okay? So if your stress is up and it's causing a cascade of events, which I, like I said, we're gonna talk about, um, you know, we're gonna help you figure that out naturally. You're not gonna have to inject yourself with hormones or take pills uh, to fix these types of things, okay? Um, so the first main hormone I wanna talk about is insulin. Uh, insulin, a lot of people associate strictly with diabet diabetics. Um, but this is a very important thing for a lot of you guys to understand. Um, and uh, specifically about diabetics, if you're a diabetic and you're watching this, uh, you absolutely, you need to come in here for a consultation. Um, I've just, uh, I just met with a woman. This is her, I think she just finished up her second month uh, before she came here. Um, they, her and her husband, they were very, um, just very concerned with her health, and, and they should have been. I mean, her, her glucose levels were up in the 400s, 450, 500 sometimes. She wasn't uh, tracking things, wasn't paying attention. Uh, two months later, her sugars are down to 120, okay? So she's on her way uh, to possibly down the road, maybe not having to take as much medicine, you know, as she, as she is currently. So, um, you know, if you're a diabetic, you know, don't be afraid of changing your diet. Don't be afraid of those types of things. It's, it's, it's what you need, okay? Um, so what does insulin do? Insulin takes your 
blood sugar, I'm sorry, the sugar that's found in your blood after you eat, and it stores it. And the first place it takes it is your muscle tissue, okay? So muscle tissue, think of if you go to a, an airport, those little tiny storage lockers that you can hold maybe a backpack or a pair of shoes in, okay? And then, so that gets filled up very quickly. The second place it takes it is fat cells. And so if the muscle storage volume is that small airport locker, think of those big, you know, two car garage type storage units you can buy to store couches and cars and things like that. Only the thing is, when that's full, you can get another two units and another two units. Okay, you have an unlimited amount there. Okay, um, so insulin takes it, you know, from the blood to the muscle first to the fat cells next for storage. And so anytime we eat things like sugar, uh, flour, you know, carb containing uh, foods, that causes your insulin levels to spike. And you know, I, I know a lot of people know that, okay, but even better carbs for you can spike your, your blood sugar. You can have the most beautiful piece of organic whole grain spelt sprouted bread and it will still spike your blood sugar and you know we'll talk about why that's a problem here in a second but it still does that okay so i do get a question a lot you know about good carbs bad carbs and i'm not here to i'm not trying to vilify carbohydrates i'm not okay um but when we're talking about weight loss there are certain facts that we have to understand are true about our human body okay um so the direct issue is this we eat say a sugary snack our insulin levels go up then what happens is that stresses our body and our cortisol levels now they go up okay that causes our body chemistry to be affected that causes our body to become more acidic and when we are acidic internally now we want to eat more sugar so we ate the sugar but now because of our body chemistry changing now we want more okay and the result of all of this is your fat burning metabolism that goes down those are direct inverse relationship one goes up the other goes down okay so you'd never want your your insulin levels to be spiking like that um, and so that chem that chemical process there um, I just want to make sure you guys understand that this is not always a mind over matter issue you're not a weak person if you continually crave sugar just you need to be instructed and educated on how your body works so that you can help yourself avoid getting in that negative uh, sugar cycle okay um, it's not a mind over matter issue this is a chemistry problem and so where this plays out in the real world here is I hear a lot of folks uh, sometimes talk about, well, I just had a little bite. I just, my granddaughter was eating macaroni and cheese and I just had a little bite. Okay. That's Tuesday. Then Friday I was baking cookies for my husband and, you know, I had to taste it, right. Just to make sure it tasted good. There's another bite. And so we have two or three or four or five or six of those bites a week. And all of a sudden, instead of our insulin levels, like they're supposed to be just swimming along naturally, just go up a little bit, but they're you know, pretty stable. Now they're swimming along and now I have that bite and it's way up. Okay. They're swimming along another bite. It's way up. And, you know, if you are doing a weight loss program, if you're doing our program, somebody else's program, doing your own program and you're struggling, and you're trying to justify those little off track choices you're making, just know that it, it's your body chemistry that's slowing you down. It's your insulin levels that are slowing you down. Okay. Um, another good question I get, you know, quite often is, well, Dr. Stefan, I heard there's, uh, there's sugar and good sugars in fruits and vegetables. And absolutely, there absolutely is. Um, there's good sugar for your body. Uh, on our program, and this is the, really the only one I can speak for is, we teach you what is going to affect your blood sugar the least from a fruit and vegetable standpoint. Those are the foods that we're gonna recommend for you, okay, to keep you, keep you in the clear. So, um, you know, and, and back to the point that, and I, I hear this a lot, so I just wanna make sure we get this out there. Um, people talk about, doc, it is just a tiny bit, I swear. And I understand that, okay, but insulin spiking as a result of a bad food choice, is the same as a, a fact as gravity is a fact. So if you fall off a building, it doesn't matter if you jumped off, if somebody pushed you off, if you tripped and fell and stumbled off, the same, you know, the same outcome happens. You fall and, and you splat. Okay. It's the same thing. When you eat, you know, sugar spiking foods like that, insulin goes up and fat brain metabolism goes down. Okay. So 
if that's, you know, hopefully that's helpful. Um, if that's too confusing, don't worry about that because if you do ever end up, you know, checking into our program, we take care of all that for you. And so you don't have to worry about insulin and leptin and all these types of hormones. You know, we've already done the work for you. So you follow along with what we will teach you and you will do just fine. Okay. So that was the first step. Remember, we have five steps to kill your cravings. Step number one was the hormones. Got to balance the hormones. Step number two is we have to feed our bodies consistently, consistently all day. Okay. Uh, for the most part, we live in a pretty calorie counting world. And that's unfortunate um, because it just doesn't work long term. Okay. You cannot do a restriction type program long term and be successful. Uh, we are humans. There's too many temptations. It's just too hard. Okay. Um, and so we think that, all right, I take in less, I take in less, I bust my butt at the gym, I work out for an hour and a half a day, and I lose weight. And, you know, it just doesn't work long term. Okay. Um, that can work for a short period of time. Absolutely. Okay. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not vilifying exercise. In fact, we're going to talk about exercise in a little more detail here in a few minutes. The exercise is great. It's great for you for several different reasons. Okay. Um, but, uh, but anyway, so when you, um, when you don't feed your body consistently, uh, what happens is you, your body gets into starvation mode. And I'm sure if you've ever researched weight loss, you understand um, this concept, but let me just explain it, you know, how I understand it. So when your body is not sure that it's going to get its next meal, then what it tends to do is any, any food that it takes in, well, it's going to hang onto it and store it for future use because it's just not sure when you're going to get it again. Okay. So how do you know if you're in starvation mode? If you're the type of person that uh, they'll have a cup of coffee for breakfast, they skip lunch because, you know, they're too busy and then they eat, uh, you know, either a small or a big meal for dinner, you know, your body has no clue when it's next. You've, you've confused it to the point where it doesn't understand when your next meal is going to be and you're going to store all, all of that uh, food and nutrients, you know, as fat, unfortunately. Okay. Um, you know, metabolism, think of it like, it's like you're building a fire. You know, how do you keep that fire burning and, and raging is you, you feed it all day. You feed it every couple hours. But what happens if you dump a huge tree trunk that's six feet wide on it? Well, it goes out. Okay, that's the same thing you're doing when you're not eating and nourishing yourself all day. Then you dump that big log on it at dinner time, and then you fall right to sleep. Okay, so you're, you're, you're killing your metabolism by doing that. Um, so when you, you know, eat the way we teach you here, um, we're actually teaching your body to burn its stored fat as a fuel source and not the food that you eat. Okay. And that's how you're able to shrink your body mass and lose weight uh, very quickly. Um, and, and quickly is one thing um, I call it efficiently. So we really want to help you lose as efficient as possible. Um, so just definitely stop skipping those meals, you know, less is not more all the time. Okay. Uh, we'll give you full instruction on how to, on how to do that. All right. So Step one, we've got to balance those hormones. Step two, we need you to feed your body consistently. Okay, step three, this is more of a, a, mental, uh, a mental technique that we need to practice a little better, okay? It's called eat, we have to eat more mindfully. Okay, we have to. What does that mean? We have to be present in the moment when we're actually consuming our food. We have to develop that neurological connection between that food sitting on your plate and the satisfaction receptors up here in your brain, okay? Uh, so a couple of examples of how that can get off track. Um, there are, you know, many different, I'm not picking on Italians, but many different, you know, households. My in-laws are part Italian and it's very food, uh, food oriented, okay? And what do you see, what does, what do you get from a, a you know, an Italian grandma type person if you ask for a little bit? She's, you come over, you walk in the house and, Hey, we have food. Well, I'll just have a little bit. You get, you get a plate, right? Or if you say, oh, I'm not hungry. Well, you get a little bit. All right. And so we end up just, we eat it because it makes her happy. And that's how they're showing love. You know, it, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cute to think of, um, but it creates mindless eating, which we don't, which we don't want to do. Okay. Um, we also have, you know, the, the speed eaters. Okay. So think of this, think of the military man who, you know, they're trained that <clears throat> if lunch, if you get five minutes for lunch, you know, you plan for three minutes and then you get one minute. 
Okay, so if you ever watched a, a, a military guy eat his food, man, they just shovel it in as fast as they possibly can because they don't know, you know, how long they're going to have. Okay, um, another, you know, one last example is um, <clears throat> when you you could eat dinner and you sit down with your family, you're watching TV. Well, what comes out? The big bowl of popcorn or the bag of chips or something, and you guys are watching a movie. And two hours later, you look down in the bowl and it's empty. You didn't even. It didn't even. Uh, cross your mind that you ate the whole bag. Okay, just mindless, mindless eating. Okay, uh, in general, just as a society, we're becoming too disconnected from the process of eating. And then what happens is we are overfilling ourselves. We're overfilling ourselves, and we are unsatisfied. You know, during the process, and because, like I said before, we're not nurturing that neurological connection between food on the plate, food on the fork, into the mouth. I'm satisfied. We have to chew our food a little slow. We have to be thinking about it. Um, if we can become more connected, then we're not going to be, you know, turning to um, food in those times of stress or distress or, or anxiety. Okay. So basically, what we're doing in those times is we are filling an emotional uh, an emotional void or a hole that's created um, from this uh, stress or, or anxious issue, and we're filling it with food. Okay. And then so emotional stress that starts that negative hunger cycle the same way as physical stress or chronic pain does. It's the same thing. So we stress, our cortisol levels go up, our body acidity goes up, our sugar cravings go up. Then when we cave in on those sugar cravings, now our fat burning metabolism you know, goes down. Okay, it's that big vicious cycle. Um, and I, in no way do I claim to be an expert on you know, emotional and uh, you know, the mental techniques of, the, of this uh, part of what we do here, um, and I understand that. Okay, but we have someone on staff now that we've recently uh, partnered with the last few months that we're getting some uh, fabulous feedback from. Um, she's uh, her name's Wendy. She is a uh, certified uh, nutritionist and, and uh, counselor. She has dual certifications. Um, what our patients have is you guys have access to her um, via a group uh, phone call where she's always talking about mental techniques and, you know, stress techniques and how to not dive into the cookie jar every time you, you know, you're going through a little bit of stress. Okay, so she's an expert with that. Um, but the biggest thing we have to remember, we have to be more aware of what we're putting in our mouths. We have to understand the consequences or the benefits to what we're doing. Okay, so we balanced our hormones. We've talked about feeding our body more consistently. We've talked about how to you know, be more present in the moment when we're eating so we can really establish that connection and, and, and be filled, okay? I'm sorry, and be satisfied. We want you to be satisfied after your meals. So uh, so before I said we were gonna, I was kinda you know, knocking exercise a little bit. Well, now I wanna tell you, you know, exercise is one of the ways that you, know, we, we can, uh, you can help reduce your cravings, okay? So reduce your cravings, how does that work? Uh, if you do it the right way, it will absolutely reduce your cravings. If you do it the wrong way, it will increase your cravings. Okay, so, you know, exercise, again, exercise is absolutely not bad. It is wonderful for you. It's great for your cardiovascular health. It's great for your mental health. It's great for your physical health. Okay, it strengthens your muscles, strengthens uh, your joints. Great for arthritis. Okay, great for all those things. However, when you don't do it properly, okay, it's bad for your cravings and it can actually negatively impact your weight loss. Okay, um, so what I always stress for people is, you know, when you're going to exercise, do it in a specific way. Don't do those hour and two hour bike rides or walks or you know, don't go for these long runs. Um, with regard to what we are trying to teach here, uh, that's going to do you a disservice because that stresses your body. And what did we just learn? When we are stressed, now our cortisol goes up, our acidity goes up, our cravings go up. And oftentimes we'll cave into that and then that keeps that vicious cycle going, okay? Um, so what I tell people on our program is, I know you want exercise, that's great. Um, I typically stress that give me a month, two months, that's sometimes three or four. Give me a month or two, just focus on your food, just focus on your metabolism, get your habits changed, get your routines changed, and then get into some exercise. Okay, um, so the exercise that we typically recommend is called burst training, interval training, high intensity exercise. You know, I think HIT training is another H I I T training, um, whatever you want to call it. But essentially, it's this: you warm up for a minute or two. Let's use the treadmill for an example. 
you're on the treadmill, you warm up for two minutes, then you turn that thing up to your sprint speed, whether that's three miles an hour or 10, it doesn't matter. It's just whatever your sprint speed is, you do that for 30 seconds. Then you back it down to a low intensity for 90 seconds and keep cycling. So 30 seconds sprint, 90 second you know, walk. 30 second sprint, 90 second walk. You'll do that for eight repetitions. Then you have a two minute cool down, you're in and out in 20 minutes, you're done. Hit the showers, okay? Your mission accomplished. Now, some people say, my back hurts, my knee hurts, I have an artificial knee, I'm on crutches. It doesn't matter. You can do, you can do this in a pool, you can do this on the bike, you can do this outside on, on, the, on the road walking your dog, you can do this in the weight room, you can just do push-ups or sit-ups or jumping jacks, or it, it doesn't matter, okay? Um, not all of those situations will be great for someone who has a bad knee. You know, for that person, get in the pool. Okay, there's a pool within 20 minutes of everyone, typically in most places, all right? Um, but again, with our program, I don't want you to worry about that stuff for the first couple of months. Just focus on your diet. Just focus on changing those habits and getting all that squared away. Okay, so that's step four, a final step to help uh, kill your cravings, whether you're doing our program, when you're, whether you're doing you know any other program. So uh, step five is, is hydration. So we have to properly hydrate our bodies if we ever want to feel uh, satisfied and be as healthy as possible. Um, so a couple things, and I'm sure you guys have heard this before, but just to get it here uh, you know, on paper, if you feel thirsty, you're already dehydrated. You're behind the eight ball, okay? If your urine is you know, dark yellow, you're already dehydrated, okay? That urine, that should be a light, uh, clear color or just a light yellow color. That's how you know that you're, you're drinking enough, okay? Uh, well, how much, how much is too much? How much is not enough? It's kind of a hard question to answer because everybody's situation is pretty different. Um, for the most part, information out there, half of your body weight in ounces. So if you're 200 pounds, about 100 ounces, three quarters of a gallon or so. Um, there are some of you guys maybe with other medical issues that, you know, that's kind of beyond the scope of what we're talking about here today. Um, maybe you can't drink that much or maybe you should be drinking a little less. Uh, but in general, if you're a healthy person, um, you know, about half your body weight is a pretty good, uh, pretty good uh, recommendation. And then basically, why does dehydration, you know, sometimes cause hunger? Uh, sometimes it's be, you're, you're not actually craving food. What you're craving is fluid or water. And your body's like, okay, this, this, this guy or girl is not giving me what I need. Let me tell him I'm hungry and I can extract some of the liquid out of that, out of that food. Okay. I um, mean, again, it's a, it's a, it's a stress thing. It stresses your body out. Now we're overeating and they all, they all really play together. Okay. So one more time. So we got the five of uh, the five steps to kill your cravings today. We talked about balancing your body's hormones, uh, insulin and cortisol were the two major ones. So the hormones that affect your blood sugar and the hormones that affect your stress levels. Okay. We talked about feeding your body consistently. You cannot starve yourself. You can't skip meals. Um, it just slows your metabolism down. We talked about being more mindful when you eat. So really being present and aware of what you're doing, it will truly, truly help you. You know, eat dinner with the TV off, the phone off, no distractions, put the phone down, put the Facebook down, you know, that kind of thing. Just focus on what you're doing. You'll be more satisfied, all right? Um, we talked about exercise in the right way. When you do short bursts of interval training, no matter if it's in a pool, on a bike, you know, just you know, doing leg lifts at home on your living room floor, it doesn't matter. You can make anything into burst training. But when you do that, that will reduce your uh, cravings. And then finally, you have to hydrate, okay? We have to be hydrated so that our, our body functions uh, properly. And we don't, want to, we don't want our body to um, trick us into thinking we're actually hungry when it's really just we're thirsty, okay? So I got a, a little a bonus tip for you guys. Uh, sometimes you will be doing everything you're supposed to do. And you just have one of those days. I know I have them from time to time where my diet's on point, I drank all my water, I got a little exercise in the morning, and here it is after dinner, and I'm just, it doesn't matter, I'm starved. I can eat anything in the house, okay? My best advice sometimes is just, just get to the pillow. Just make it to bed, go to bed early, um, you know, just try to get, you know, close your eyes and without giving, without giving in. You're gonna wake up refreshed, 
feeling great. Those that those hunger pains they'll they'll have gone away. Uh, you basically you start the next day on a great foot, as opposed to if you would have caved in and you know maybe got in the snack jar or something like that. And it just puts you in a bad mood. You guys have had you. I know you you've, you've been through this because most of us have tried uh, to do something with our health and our weight. Um, and if you can get get to the pillow, you know that can solve that can solve a lot of things. Okay. So um, hopefully this was helpful today. Um, I'm going to start doing a lot more of these, you know, definitely a couple per month um, so we can get some good quality info out to you guys. Uh, and again, this is for current members of our program. This is for people that are possibly thinking about joining our program. This is for people that have been on our program um, that maybe have not been here for a while and they need a little reboot. And, you know, hopefully uh, this will help you guys. You know, it's, it's good information. Um, if you if you know of someone that could possibly benefit from something like this, just share this with them. Uh, you know, you know, tell them about us, okay? And we'll take great care of them. Um, so, how does the process work? Uh, when you if you are ever interested in coming in here, what we offer we offer free consultations. Uh, you come in, uh, you fill some paperwork out. We're going to share some information with you. Uh, you'll meet with me. Everyone meets with me personally. Uh, we go over your your health goals. You know, how much weight you want to lose. Um, how much weight I think you should lose, okay? We typically then, you know, meet in the middle. Um, we go over your health history, your medication list, your motivations, you know, why are you here? You know, why are you doing this? Um, and then truly, honestly, we try to figure out if our plan is good for you, if we're going to be a good fit. Nobody benefits if it's not a good fit, or if, or if I'm trying to force it, or if you're trying to force yourself in with us. Your, your head has to be in the right place. Your health has to be in the right place. Um, it's got, we have to make sure it, it's really good for you. Um, you know, what, and, and if it is, I'll certainly offer it for you. I'll offer it to you, okay? Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put our contact deals or details in the comment section of, of the video here so you can get that, you know, if you're having a hard time finding that. Um, and what I'm also going to do is I'm going to go through, I see there's a couple questions here down below. I'm going to go through those because we're, we're running short on time here. It's a little longer than I want it to go. Uh, I'm going to answer those personally right, you know, today and this afternoon. And uh, like I said, you know, hopefully you guys have got some benefit from this. Um, my name is, you know, Dr. Stefan. I'm here with Twin Hills uh, Health Center and Twin Hills Weight Loss. Um, and just get a hold of us if you need absolutely anything here on our Facebook page or I'll put our contact info down below. So have a wonderful day.